welcome to another Keeping Up With Senior Solutions in the series on the BCTV. Uh, today, we're extremely happy to have somebody you probably haven't met on our show before, and that is Fran Freeman. Jim, where are you? I'm right here in, in the house at Chester, Vermont. So All right. And Fran and I have done some talking, and uh, this is going to be a good show. Oh, wonderful. Well, I won't stay on too long. I'll let you guys get into the conversation and we'll invite everybody out there to listen and write some notes down if they need to and uh, carry on. So um, we just had a nice holiday weekend. Hopefully we're all back uh, with our thinking caps on. I, I'm questioning mine, but that's all right. Working so Fran, <laughs> welcome. We're going to tell us a little bit about yourself and then if you and Jim want to talk about a few things and I'll chime in as I can and let's have a great show and everybody join the fun. Okay. Um, let me, I don't know where to begin. Well, I understand first of all that you're a terrific uh, proponent of Reiki. Yes. I started, uh -huh. I uh, learned Reiki in 1982. That was, um, <clears throat> that was my first degree class. And then in 1983, I took the next level, which is second degree, and then waited 10 years practicing and uh, to become a master. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea about becoming a master for me and for the system that I use, which is called Usui Shiki Ryoho, um, was to be able to teach because I was doing a lot of introductions about Reiki sure. and I wasn't able to teach it. It was driving me crazy. At that time, I was living, at one point I was living in North Carolina and <clears throat> introduced Reiki to all these different groups, you know, <clears throat> to Rotary, to, you know, all the different community groups, and I couldn't teach it. I could kind of show people therapeutic touch and so on, but um, I just had a deep desire to be able to share this. And um, I first started studying the healing arts uh, in 1970. Uh, 1979, uh, became aware of the desire to learn healing arts when I was working with a Down syndrome boy and um, in at Hogan Regional Center in Massachusetts. And I had my hands on him and he was a child that couldn't express himself verbally and he made these sounds that were just wrenching. And at that moment I wished, although I didn't know anything existed, that I could do something for healing. And um, a little while after that, a couple of years after that, I went to visit Oregon for a week in, Jan in February when everybody was smiling. And I thought, wow, everybody smiles here. This is a great place. <laughs> little did I know it's because there was sun in February in Oregon. <laughs> Be that as it may, I was just, I had to go there. I took a leave of absence and I went there and that led me to learning about the healing arts. And at, at that time in Eugene, there were all kinds of things that you could learn. And as I said, acupressure, therapeutic touch, polarity therapy, all these things were coming either from, well, therapeutic ter touch came from the nursing community, community, but other things came from the East and they came to the West Coast first. Right. So um, it was just this delicious banquet of <laughs> all these healing arts, I couldn't get enough of wind yoga and so on. And um, the person that I'm very close to was ill and in the hospital. And this woman named Marta Getty, um, a beautiful woman, um, just filled with a glow, um, was doing treat Reiki treatments on him. And I thought, okay, I know all these other things, but I wanna know how to do this. And so she taught me um, she initiated me, which is how you um, are opened to the energy. So she initiated me, and then I could also um, join in the treatments. Mm -hmm. And that led to me wanting to continue mainly with Reiki, because at that point I shared earlier, I didn't have to decide what a person needs. Because with Reiki, the energy comes through me, not from me. So I'm not deciding what a person needs. It's like a, um, well, the woman who taught, who initiated me as a master, Phyllis said that um, you can imagine the universe is this great big giant, giant frap of healing energy. And 
the practitioner is the straw and the person receiving the energy is drinking through the straw. So at some level, something happens that I can't quite explain and, I, and the person receives wonderful stuff. So that's a little bit. I've also been a speech pathologist for over 30 years, working mainly in the schools, had a private practice, um, worked in, started actually at Belgiantown State School, um, working there um, with people with handicaps and um, studied neurolinguistic programming because I wanted to assist with speech therapy, um, studied a few other things, hypnosis and little things like that. So you've had your hand in the, the healing cent centered, I guess I would say healing as a person centered healer for quite a while. Right. Wow. Yeah. Jim, jump in here, ask some good questions. Oh, I, I, have, I have plenty of questions. Um, so I, I'm sure that they're, they're gonna be skeptics uh, <laughs> because it's a fairly, you know, for, for a lot of people it's new, right? <laughs> Um, and so how do you get by that obstacle um, um, so that, you know, th this, is a, this is more than just uh, uh, helping people uh, feel better about something. This is almost a philosophy of life in a way, I would think. Maybe I'm stretching it out too far, but um, how do you convince people that it can benefit them, especially senior citizens that are seeing 10 doctors that have all these prescription drugs and all of that. How do you deal with that? Well, when I do interventions in person, yes. I treat people with Reiki, so they experience it. Okay. So yeah. it's an experiential, uh, they'll have the experience of it and they can feel it. They can feel their bodies relaxing or, you know, I put my hand on the shoulder and the pain goes away or, you know, they, they're feeling depressed and they end up feeling better. Just with, you know, five or 10 minutes sometimes doing an introduction, that can, that can happen. So being direct um, physically is really a wonderful thing. And I, I've done some introductions, like at the strolling of the heifers. And, yes. you know, people loved it. So that's, and then skeptics are the best. I love it when people are skeptical, because to me, that means they're not just accepting something. They are, um, they're willing to do a little research. They want a question that they're taking care of themselves. I think skepticism is, is a really healthy thing to have. So the experience of Reiki can can help them to feel it, mm. have a sense of it. Yeah, it's very different than being negative. You know, that's a different feeling. Okay. You know, I I think just just to be gee, I've never heard of this. I'm going to be a little curious and careful though. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And there are. Um, I have questions. Okay. <laughs> when you have a chance. I have two questions like for people who absolutely know nothing about Reiki, never heard of it, are not interested, whatever. Here's two questions. My first question I would ask, does it hurt? And the second <laughs> question, <laughs> and the other question is, is it like massage? Okay. And how, not, how is it different if it's not like massage? Okay, so with Reiki, I simply place my hands on a person. I put, place my hands on their face, the side of their head, underneath their head. I don't do any mis manipulation, no movement at all. Okay. Um, and so, <clears throat> and I don't recommend that it be done with massage, that it be done separately from massage. Like some people who do massage also do Reiki. And they might treat the person with Reiki before the person gets relaxed, and then the massage is deeper. So right, um, right. it is not, it is, the similarity is a person lies down on a table. However, they're fully clothed, and all they have to do is lie there and turn over once. And well, I think I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and when I'm doing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, doing treatments at a distance, we can get into, let me answer your second question. Does it hurt? Um, 
the woman who brought Reiki to the Western world, uh, let's see if I can, <clears throat> that woman with the, this is opposite of, <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> let me bring these a little closer. So this woman, this woman is Hawaii, let me find the right place. There, good, I, we see it. Hawaii Takata. And, and she brought Reiki to the Western world. She introduced it to Canada, to California. She traveled to Puerto Rico. She traveled um, all over and um, brought it from Japan to the Western world. And I could probably simplify it by giving you a little bit of a really brief little history of it. But she said, and, and her words still ring, um, ring true, that Reiki heals through um, what she called healing crisis. So let's say I have, I'll give you an example. I worked with a little boy who had rheumatoid arthritis in his knees. And <clears throat> um, he came and I treated him. And he would say, okay, I have my hands on. And he'd say, okay, I feel, oh, by the way, most of the time people experience heat at my hands and think they're heating pads, but it's not, it's Reiki. So I have my hands on him, on his knees. And he'd say, okay, I feel heat. Okay, it's getting hotter. Okay, it hurts a little bit more. And then in a few minutes he says, okay, it's not hot anymore. And the pain is gone. So it brings the whole idea about healing is to bring things to the surface so they can be released. Yeah. And, and so does it hurt? No. Like if you were doing deep tissue massage? No. Can it help you to release pain? Yes. Nice. Well, it sounds very good. It is. <laughs> so, yeah, it does sound really good. Um, so you are definitely instrumental in this process. Once a person has met with you and goes through that, can they do Reiki on their own? Or will they always need another person involved in the process? One of the reasons for people to learn Reiki is to treat themselves. So this morning, I don't know how long, I, I place my hands on and I do self-treatment. So if a person learns what we call first degree in our system, that's all they ever have to do. And they can treat themselves every day. My aunt, um, I had an aunt who was, uh, um, she has now since passed, but um, her husband was ill. So she learned Reiki <laughs> in order to help treat him. And um, yeah, it was just, it was wonderful for her. And she, if her hip hurt, she put her hand on, <laughs> you know, it, it just, it, it is really useful to have for aches and pains. And does it work for everybody? Can, I mean, do you have to have kind of a belief that it's gonna work or will it work? <clears throat> it works. Um, another little example, uh, my father, um, um, in his eighties, uh, was visiting with him and, and I wanted to treat him. And I said, dad, can I do Reiki on you? He said, oh, that's okay. Which is another <laughs> one. Uh, yeah. He said, uh, dad, can I put my hands on you? Oh, yeah, sure. So I put my hands on him and it was a lot of energy. It was the word that didn't make sense to him, not what I was doing. Right. And I also noticed, and this is something that I think um, seniors might want to know about, is that I noticed with my dad, because he'd gone through a series of losses, his home and dogs, his wife, uh, mother had died, and then he was in a facility. And this man was always like, strong yeah. and physical and you know I have a picture of him he looks like a little bodybuilder you know anyway he was really bent over and so I started treating his heart center and slowly but surely he actually started sitting up more straight and from that I surmised that it was his emotional pain that was causing him to bend over and protect his heart so um I just wanted to share that little story and hope I didn't lose my way. <laughs> well, that's really nice. 
Go ahead, Jim. Oh, so, oh, I guess the reason I want to mention that is that that posture also is really important in maintaining a good posture for seniors for, for a lot of different reasons. And I was relieved that he could be more upright. So I know we talked a little earlier before we went on the air, a little bit about um, the challenges that you have had to face with the, the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. So how are you dealing with that in uh, with Reiki? I'm doing what they what we call distant or distance treatments. So I make an appointment with somebody for an hour, make sure they're lying down, and then um, they tell me any particular issues that they have. And I do a treatment. And um, then afterwards, I text them so they don't disturb them with a phone call because sometimes they could be asleep. It puts you, can put you into a meditative state. And um, so then I text them and they call me back and I give them feedback about what I experienced and especially what they experienced. I, hear, I like to hear how, you know, did that pain go away or are you feeling more relaxed? So that's how I'm dealing with it. I'm simply doing it from home now. Um, yeah. I do have an office. It just is, makes it simpler to, to just go in the other room than to drive downtown. Yeah, yeah ma'am. Well, it, it's, it's much much easier now for your clients in a way, because uh, mm -hmm. especially people, you know, like our ages or my age, they're a little nervous about going out and so mm -hmm. forth. So I think you've been really accommodating that's really been great for them. And it's been wonderful for me because <clears throat> as I shared earlier, <clears throat> what I've found is that doing more distance treatments this way, I'm learning more. I mean, every time I do Reiki, a Reiki session, I feel like on some level I'm learning something. Um, but the, the sessions uh, are getting deeper. I'm getting intuitions about the people and, um, Oh, it's just rich and it's getting richer and deeper all the time. So um, it, it, it's serving me very well, even though I can't work with people directly. It sounds that way. Yeah. Is that what you were, this sounds like what you were telling me over the phone last week about distance uh, treatments mm -hmm. and how important that is now during COVID because so many of us you know, were a little more anxious, which affects our systems. And Absolutely. the fact that you are able to perform treatments with people over the telephone, that's mm -hmm. amazing. I think, I think that's absolutely wonderful. So how would they get in touch with you to do that? Um, they can contact me at reikihearts at gmail.com, and I can spell that out for you. Um, also, you can just call me or text me. Okay, great. That's so really good. I, one more thing I wanted to, because I don't know if I missed anything earlier. You were also talking about um, being able to help with immune system disorders. <clears throat> yeah, um, Reiki does help your immune system. And, okay. and, and it's, <clears throat> it's something that I'm very concerned about, especially now during COVID, that we really need to take care of our immune system. I mean, I'm taking zinc, astragalus, <laughs> Sambuca, elderberry, elderberry syrup, you know, all the things that I know to do. Um, <clears throat> Wait a minute, you're in... not talking about elderberry pancake syrup. Ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I think you just started a new one. Joanne interview. has been practicing this, practicing this for years. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, sorry to interrupt there. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so, repeat the question for me, please. <laughs> so, by doing that immune uh, system disorder treatments, right? You're thinking like, boy, so many of us are developing immune system disorders now by maybe less activity, maybe not such good um, nutrition and things like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, along with improving our physical well-being by having the Reiki treatments it can actually boost your immune immune system yes because our immune system is fired by stress especially our adrenals I mean how many times in a day 
do we have stress? How many times, you know, you're in the, you're in the car, although of course it doesn't happen so much in Brattleboro because people are such wonderful drivers. I love them here. But um, let's say I'm in, in traffic and all of a sudden I have to stop short. My adrenals take that as a hit. And how many times during the day are our adrenals stressed? So reducing the amount of stress in your body and your whole system automatically helps your immune system. There's a, a, a little tip, another thing you can do, because it's a gland that is very um, ignored or, or not getting much attention, but it's a thymus gland. And one thing people can do that's really simple is just tap it. Not rub it, but tap it. And that stimulates the thymus gland. So um, there's wonderful ways to work with your immune system, reducing the amount of stress in your whole body, in your whole system is a really important part. And some, so I've gotten some feedback. I just tell you a little bit of the feedback that I've gotten from doing distance treatments. And that is um, that the experience was quite good that the person was letting go of stress, feeling calmer and doing okay now. Um, that it was like a meditation. At the end of the treatment, the person felt peaceful, um, restful, with reduced agitation. Um, pain was diminished or gone. Um, the clarity of thinking was improved. And the person was able, another person was able to feel experience of being detached from the problems, which is like what happens when we're in a meditative state. Um, a feeling of being in balance and um, being nurtured. And the whole idea about maintaining health is, is to maintain a balance in all our systems, in our um, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual systems. And the beauty of Reiki is that it, it goes, literally goes where it needs to go. So it can go, well, um, I'll give another example. Um, when I was able to host um, a, a healing circle, which I do, which is when a group of us that are taught get together and practice together, what I noticed at first was that um, the physical healing seemed to happen. And then over time, and this was meeting with people over, you know, a few years. Um, and then, um, you know, some changes would happen on an emotional level. And then finally, something would happen eventually, and not necessarily, so not necessarily sequentially, but in a spiritual place. And they, some people would stop coming. And I go, oh, what's going on? Because they had found their spiritual path and found a way to experience their spirituality. And Reiki led them to it. Mm -hmm. So people can come to Reiki um, for a lot of reasons. Usually um, uh, one of the best reasons is to reconnect or connect strongly with your intuition and about what's good for you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so yeah. So if I made an appointment to, to have a, a Reiki session, how long does the session, the first session take? An hour. About an hour? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talk first on the phone. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you tell me what, you know, what your issues are. And, and that's, you know, even if you didn't, <laughs> it would still work. I might say it's, my issue is Joanne. All right, no. <laughs> no, kidding. <laughs> so you would tell, oh, you know, I've got a pain in my back, or mm -hmm. I'm feeling uh, stressed out, or my stomach, whatever, you know, and it just, it's information for me, and I've developed a little system that I really enjoy, where I, I check out all these kinds of, let's define the thing, so I've got a little checklist that I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To find just to just to see where everything is at, um, Reiki does not. Let me back up. I don't teach chakras in this system. It is simply Reiki. That's all we do. Um, I don't mix other energies or anything else with it. Right, right. You know. So, but I do like to check. I like to check and see where a person at is at before and after. So I just do that for my own edification. So what what does the hour session cost a person? Um, $45. Oh, well, that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have it be reasonable so people can come back. Right. 
um, I was charging less and um, I've been told that that's not a good idea. So, uh, and, and I still think 45 is a fair amount. And, and the money that I'm receiving now, I'm donating. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's nice. That's very yeah. good for people to know. Very good, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I, I'm happy to donate to um, people who are in need. And I do it directly, not through organizations, typically. Yeah. Then you know they get it. Right? Well, yes, don't have food. Here's and I have Cash App, so I can just fire some money to them right away. It's fun. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, any question? Any more questions? Oh my gosh, I'm sure we do. Um, what was I thinking of? Well, I just wanted to let you know that I did get the article that you emailed to me prior to mm -hmm. this question. So um, I'm going to take a look at it. I may have to hmm, just edit it a slight bit because I have okay. word requirements for my submissions to the newspapers. Mm -hmm. But I'd love to, with your permission, recycle this into a column. Oh, I love and it. We put, and we put it out, we put our columns out in the Reformer, um, the, uh, the Eagle, the Springfield Reporter, uh, Vermont Journal, Vermont News. Um, Vermont Standard. So we, we do send that around, uh, but I wouldn't do it without asking you. Is that okay? It would be wonderful. The more people who know, and I'm not the only well, person who does it. Rebecca Reuter is in town and she can do it too, you know? <laughs> the fact that um, so many people are finding themselves between two things, well, more, but the two top ones is the COVID pandemic and the upcoming election. More and more people are just getting so, you know, nervous. Stress. And Stress. If this is a way that people can, like you say, reconnect with their intuition, relax, think clearly, feel nurtured and peaceful. Mm -hmm. That is a gift that we all need. And something that many, many people find extremely hard to find. Yes. So I'd like to, I'd like to spread the word. That would be wonderful, really. And I uh, have a couple of other ideas I'll talk to Jim about after the session, but um, this is really wonderful. And do you, are, are, do you still have your studio in the building with our office in Bradford? Yes, I do. I still have my office. Do you go there ever now with COVID? Um, I haven't, but I'm planning on, I'm going to work on get, I want to get it set up so that I can see people. Um, okay. It's just that right now, I'm with age and yeah. understandable. understandable physical history myself. I, I, and I, I don't want to offer any disease to anyone and I don't want anybody to offer it to me. So, Absolutely. Better yeah. safe than sorry. Absolutely. This is just wonderful now. Um, Jim, what do you have any other things we think we, think we want to uh, ask? Oh, I, I think you? it's a, a service uh, that we need to let some of our <clears throat> clients know about and, and gives them, let them make a decision to say, gee, this might benefit me. I, I, was, I was talking about one of uh, the clients that I work with who is kind of, you know, trying to deal with a chaotic situation. And uh, I think this would relieve her quite a bit, mm -hmm. all right? So that is another option uh, uh, it, that uh, we can utilize uh, as senior solutions. You know, I have a question. I hadn't thought of it till this very second. Fran, is there any way that any health insurance policies cover Reiki treatments? Um. In, I think in New Hampshire, they're beginning to do that. Then I don't believe that's happened here yet. That might be something that would be worth investigating. Yeah, okay. Because it seems to me that so many different healing systems have been developing over the years and been proved to be efficacious that it seems crazy that you can only receive medical care through pills, injections, or operations. Mm -hmm. So if there are other modalities, it would be wonderful if the insurers could cover some of that. It sure would. 
which we can explore that we can explore that yeah okay well i'm um, thanking you very much could i share a little bit about um one of the things that i had mentioned i, I don't know if our time is our time up no no go ahead okay Thanks, I, 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 I wanted to talk about <clears throat> just go off of reiki for a little bit and talk about swallowing disorders um with oh. people because i mentioned earlier about posture um and also you, you mentioned about people not communicating as much so what happens when we become older and we're no longer at our job and we're no talk, longer talking a mile a minute and we're no longer using all of our facial muscles we're no longer aware of our posture we get home we just kind of you know not as um we're not as rigorously involved with the whole musculature here and so um <clears throat> What I've noticed, well, I've worked in speech pathology with people with swallowing disorders, and um, it's a, one of great concern that I have because I sometimes, you know, see people aspirating mm -hmm. out to dinner, you know, drinking through a straw. Oh, God, it goes yeah. right into your lungs. So um, <clears throat> I'm being kind of scattered and discussing this, but... But my concern is that, that people, when they become older, and I've had to do this myself, because I've recognized a problem with myself, that I was starting to develop a swallowing disorder, um, is that I sit up straight, I clench my teeth, and I literally raise up my hyoid bone, raise up this whole part, the whole larynx, when I'm swallowing, it's a big noisy thing, like, and that gets things working again. So when I'm starting to notice that I'm starting to cough a little or choke a little when I'm eating, I start this practice of doing that again. And I do it with food. And liquid is especially important because liquid goes down our throat more quickly, of course, than food does. So with a liquid, with a liquid just even taking a sip of water, bam, it's going down. And so, especially when people are drinking, they should be cognizant of making sure that they have a correct swallow. Um, and, and really working on posture because as we get older and we bend over, you know, we're closing off our airway. We're closing off this whole air place where all that work is supposed to take place. So right. that's something I wanted to share so people are aware of it. And um, <clears throat> so when you do that, weird looking thing that I just did, it helps to raise everything up and stops the fluid from going in to your lungs, which is aspiration. Right. Very good advice. I think I'll be practicing. <laughs> yeah, and it's good to practice ahead of time in case it comes up. So do you have any questions about where Reiki came from or? Well, you told us it came from Japan. Right. <clears throat> There was a man named, now it, it's considered to be an ancient healing art. Right. And the thing that happened was with this, with this man, Makao Usui, get his picture, just a moment. This, this first, let me see, I'll get back to Hayashi. Okay. This is Makao Usui. Uh -huh. And if you've, do Reiki online, you'll see his face everywhere. And, and <clears throat> he was in Japan. Um, he died in 1929, to give you a reference. And he um, was a seeker. And somehow, not only did he find this healing practice, but found a way to be able to pass it on to others. So he passed it on to this man, um, Chijiro Hayashi, we call, we call him doctor just as a term of respect, which is a J Japanese thing to do. Um, <clears throat> and, doctor, and, there's a, and Dr. Hayashi um, maintained the healing practice. There's another, there's a, a group in Japan who are cloistered who maintain it as a spiritual practice and it's days within. Um, there's lots of information now out there and it's, it's kind of hard to <laughs> sort through it all, but this is how it came to the U.S. It, and Dr. Hayashi trained that woman I showed you the picture before. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to do things opposite. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Mrs. Takata, the woman in the dress. Okay. <laughs> um, 
So he trained her. She was in Japan. She was in Hawaii, but um, went to Japan for healing or for surgery. And she went to Dr. Hayashi's clinic and was healed without surgery. So she wanted to learn it. And she did. And then she practiced it. And she brought it to Hawaii and um, never advertised. Uh, word spread and she became well known and started traveling to the US and she'd teach a class in the US and they'd be calling her back. So um, she taught in, in Canada and um, on the West Coast, of course, you know, California and the West Coast and <clears throat> Puerto Rico and then started traveling to Europe. And so she's the woman who brought us this, this brave woman who was like this big and um, full of energy. Somebody described her not having met her as this, I was sitting next to this woman with sparkling energy. And um, when she passed, before she passed, she, she asked her granddaughter, Phyllis Fermoto, if she would carry on the tradition as the lineage bearer. <clears throat> and this is Phyllis. Do, to do. I'll get good at this yet. And that's Phyllis, her granddaughter, who is also my teacher. I am very fortunate to have had her you are fortunate. as my teacher. And then um, Phyllis just passed away not long ago. And now we have this beautiful man, Johannes Rendel, who um, lives in Austria, who is now our current, we refer to them as lineage bearers and grandmasters. And they, uh, their job is to maintain the integrity of our particular system. There's lots of different ways people are practicing Reiki now. You know, um, once it got to the US, ew, can you imagine? It, it just kind of, um, uh, we are independent and we do things our own way. So we create our own ways of doing things. And so this has happened with Reiki too. Um, That's great. And I feel fortunate that I was part of the, um, you know, the people who first were here. Yeah, with it. So that, that, a little must be, it must be very rewarding for you. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't you think I would be here without it. My personal story. I, I had a severe trauma in 2005 and um, literally was non-functional. And I belong to an organization called the Reiki Alliance, which has been in, um, in existence since 1983. And they have this thing called a support line. So if you have a problem, a big one, you ask people to do distance treatments on you through the support wow. line. I did that. And at first, you know, they say, see the light at the end of the tunnel. I couldn't even find the tunnel. I could only sit. Seriously, I could not sit and do anything else for the whole day. I would take me like all day to figure out how to brush my teeth. That's how bad it was. And they did the distance work on me and then I could see the light. And then I came through and I was on the other side of it and then started rebuilding my life. So Reiki has saved me. I, I can't begin to tell you how many ways because as they said, I can treat myself. And other people can treat me either directly or indirectly. That's wow, a great that's question. quite a story. <laughs> oh, great. Boy, it's been really pleasurable meeting you. And thank you very, very much. And you too. Thank yeah. you for this opportunity to share about Reiki. And All right. You know, we're going to have this um, session on our BCTV schedule. Um, it'll also be on the, uh, I guess I would say, the Senior Solutions website. We, we have all of the sessions, all the programs that people can access. And we'll also probably, I'll have to check and see. We're working on starting to redo our website. Um, and we're thinking of creating a standalone resource directory that we can then link to the website. So I will make sure that you're in that resource directory. Wonderful. So wow. that people can find Thank you. Aside from anybody can go to YouTube. We have our own YouTube account. So if anybody can access this, watch it, listen and learn. And you know, the more we learn about things that we never knew about, 
the more possible it is for us to help ourselves. And you're a, a wonderful link in that chain. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I hope that everybody out there uh, will watch this, watch it one or two times because you can't absorb it all in the first try. Um, and then uh, hopefully you'll join us, go to our website, look through some of the other programs that we've done on uh, Medicare open enrollment, um, you know, voting here in Vermont, different things like that. So Fran, you're now in our, one of the shows that are in our first year of series of BCTV shows, Keeping Up with Senior Solutions.